Hi, I'm Dr. Vidushi and in this video we describe the pearls for piggyback IOL implantation. Piggyback IOLs can be implanted either to manage refractive surprises in a secondary manner or primary piggyback IOL implantation may be done in cases of high hyperopia which need a very high IOL power. Before any piggyback IOL implantation is considered, we must ensure of course that the anterior chamber is of adequate depth and size, there is no pigment dispersion syndrome and for secondary piggyback IOL implantation, the first IOL should be well centered within the capsular bag. The IOL power calculations for piggyback IOLs is slightly different from routine IOLs. For primary piggyback IOL implantation as mentioned in uh, the Dr. Hill website, we first need to of course accurately cal measure the axial length then we calculate the total IOL power needed in a routine manner this total IOL power is then divided between the two IOLs that we have been planting one in the bag and the other in the sulcus the IOL that is to be implanted in the ciliary sulcus the power needs to be modified based on the positioning and we also need to select the appropriate IOL combination for example a hydrophobic acrylic and a hydrophilic acrylic or some such combination. For secondary piggyback IOL implants if there is a residual myopic refractive error we multiply the spherical equivalent of the refraction at the spectacle plane by a factor of 1.15 and in residual hyperopia, we multiply the spherical equivalent refraction at the spectacle plane by a factor of 1.25 to achieve the IOL power that needs to be implanted. This of course is an approximate calculation and more advanced formulas like the holiday consultant uh, software are available to calculate the exact IOL power based on the spherical equivalent refractive error as well as the keratometry readings, anterior chamber depth etc. Coming to the surgical technique, uh, it is generally preferred to implant a three-piece IOL in the ciliary sulcus and we should never implant a square edge IOL to minimize the chances of iris chaffing. In cases of high hyperopia with short eyes when we do a primary piggyback IOL implantation, we must always protect the corneal endothelium because these have relatively shorter eyes with shallow anterior chambers and therefore coating the endothelium with a dispersive viscoelastic is extremely useful. Now this is a case of high hyperopia with a refraction of plus 8 diopter sphere who wanted freedom from glasses. The IOL power calculators was 34.5 diopters and because the toric and multifocal toric IOLs were available only till a power of plus 30 diopters so a piggyback implantation of multifocal and a toric IOL was done to achieve spectacle independence. This is the surgery being performed with the marking of the steep axis as is the routine practice for toric IOLs. We then coat the endothelium very well with a dispersive ophthalmic viscoelastic device. The main incision at the steep axis and the sideboard incisions are made. And a good capsular axis because for all these refractive IOLs like toric and multifocal, a perfect centration within the capsular bag is of crucial importance. By manual irrigation aspiration was done. This was a soft lens, so FACO was hardly needed. This is a plus 19.5 diopter toric IOL available from Care Group India, which is being implanted in the capsular bag. The toric IOL is then dialed into place, achieving a proper positioning along the astigmatic axis. Finally, the viscoelastic is removed from under the IOL, and the final positioning of the IOL is then checked to align with the astigmatic axis. Next, we implanted an accretive multifocal IOL again available from the Care Group India. The standard practice is to implant one IOL into the bag and the other IOL into the ciliary sulcus, but in this case, we implanted both the IOLs in the capsular bag because for both the toric as well as the multifocal IOL, proper centration within the capsular bag is crucial to their proper functioning and good refractive results. Finally, the viscoelastic is removed from between the IOLs as well as from the anterior chamber and the postoperatively, the patient gained a vision of 6, 9 and N6 unaided and was extremely happy with the results. So to summarize, primary piggyback IOL implantation can be done not only to achieve a high IOL power in cases of high hyperopia, but different combinations of monofocal, toric and multifocal IOL implantations can also be done in a piggyback manner which is a viable and useful option for patients who need a very high power IOL and also to achieve good refractive results as well as spectacle independence.
This is the second case where a primary piggyback IOL implantation has been done for a developmental cataract using a combination of a monofocal and multifocal IOL. This is the standard surgical procedure with the main incision at the steep axis and the side ports being made and the anterior capsular rexus which of course is crucial not only because this is a developmental cataract but also because a good rexus with good centration of IOL is crucial in all these refractive cases. The lens in this young patient was soft and could be easily aspirated using the bimanual irrigation aspiration. We then implanted an accretive multifocal IOL again available from the care group India of plus 29 diopters in the capsular bag. In this case a total power of plus 32.5 diopter was needed which was not available as a multifocal IOL commercially. So we implanted one multifocal IOL of plus 29 diopters in the capsular bag and another plus 3.5 diopter hydrophilic acrylic IOL in the ciliary sulcus. We then removed the viscoelastic from between the IOLs. Now secondary piggyback IOL implantation is a very useful technique for managing cases of refractive surprises after cataract surgery. This is a case where a primary IOL implantation has been done. The first IOL is very well centered within the capsular bag which is a prerequisite for attempting any secondary piggyback IOL implantation. The corneal endothelium is coated with a dispersive viscoelastic device and a Rainer Salcoflex IOL is being used here. The Salcoflex Rainer Hydrophilic Acrylic Lens has been uh, devised for implantation into the ciliary sulcus in a piggyback manner for managing refractive surprises and in this case we are implanting a plus zero diopter multifocal lens in this young patient with a developmental cataract. Initially uh, a monofocal IOL was implanted because of the possibility of amblyopia but the patient achieved a very good distance vision and therefore to achieve spectacle independence in the young patient a uh, zero diopter multifocal IOL with a plus 3.5 diopter ad was implanted to provide him a spectacle independence for near vision as well. This is the specifically designed Salcoflex uh, IOL for implantation in the ciliary sulcus. It has a round edge and undulating haptics which minimize the chances of iris chaffing and this hydrophilic acrylic IOL is now placed in the ciliary sulcus on top of a hydrophobic acrylic IOL which had been previously implanted into the capsular bag. The alignment of the secondary IOL piggyback IOL haptics can either be along the same direction as the previous IOL or they can be aligned 90 degrees opposite to the previous IOL. In case of a toric IOL previously in the capsular bag, we must take care during the implantation of the secondary piggyback IOL not to disturb the positioning of the toric IOL within the capsular bag. The viscoelastic is then removed from between the IOLs and this combination of placing one IOL within the bag and another one in the ciliary sulcus and having one hydrophobic acrylic and another hydrophilic acrylic IOL minimizes the chances of developing interlenticular opacification or the red rock syndrome. The child achieved a very good distance and near vision unaided at the end of the surgery. So to summarize, piggyback IOL implantation which was first popularized by Dr. Gayton in 1993 has become a very useful technique now for managing both refractive surprises after cataract surgery and also uh, primary piggyback IOL implantation in cases of high hyperopia which need a very high IOL power and different combinations of monofocal, multifocal and toric IOLs can also now be used to achieve extremely good refractive results in these high hyperopia cases. Thank you.